Hello, I'm Bella May, and welcome to this video that's about me, but also a Q&A session thing video. So I sent out a question thing on Instagram, and I've got some really good questions that I'm looking forward to answering. But before we get started, I wanted to just kind of give my story a little bit and about who I am. Who am I? I'm Jean Valjean. Sorry. I am a total Les Mis fan, so there's a little fun fact about me. But yes, whenever I hear the phrase, who am I, I can't help but think of the song. So anyways, I'm Bella May, and my full name is Isabella, but pretty much everyone calls me Bella, so hence Bella May. May is my middle name. That's pretty basic. And then... As far as age goes, I know a lot of people have asked me in the past how old I am, and before I go on to answering that question, I wanted to give a little bit of idea of why I didn't share my age earlier. And one of the main reasons is I was selling custom orders at a very young age, and to release my age, I felt like it would somewhat discredit my business. So even though my work is what my business is and that should be what it's based off of, it is maybe a little concerning to hear of a very young girl who's making your several thousand dollar dress because at a young age, I was making several thousand dollar dresses for people. And I felt like at that point, it wasn't necessary to say how young I was and I felt like it was more professional to not do so. So, now I get to the point where I actually tell you how old I am. When I was 13, I made my very first costume and we will definitely look into that more as I tell a little bit of my story. And that was in the year 2013. In 2015, I was 15 and I made Cinderella's ball gown. And at age 17, in 2017, I made Belle's dress. So you're probably picking up a theme. So yes. It's 2020 and I am 20 years old. Now that I'm going on to the realm of YouTube and Instagram as more of a seamstress who really wants to inspire others and help others learn the art of sewing, I felt like it was about time to just kind of release how old I am. Release, that sounds like so professional. Anyways, I'm 20. Now that you know my age, let's go on to a little bit about my story. I was born in California, and then I've lived in a few other states, such as Tennessee and Texas. I now live in Arkansas. I live in the northwest corner, which for any of you who might care, Bentonville, Arkansas, which is in the northwest area, is the headquarters of Walmart. So, yeah. So anyways, that's where I'm located. Now, there's another thing that maybe is a little unique about me. I have nine brothers and sisters. So there's 10 kids total. I am the second youngest, so I have a little brother, and then everyone else is older than me. A lot of them are married and have kids of their own. Currently, I have 15 nieces and nephews, and two more are on their way this year, and I love babies, so that's very exciting. And you saw some of that in that Doolittle video. That was just a fraction of my nephews and nieces, but I love them to pieces and they're the best. So yeah, large family, gatherings are very large, but we have fun and it's crazy, but it's family. And then another interesting fact about me, and actually someone asked this question. I was homeschooled all the way through, top to bottom, whatever, however you say that. I was homeschooled and really that is something that helped me build my career and business was having the freedom to pursue sewing and everything in general. I was able to have that freedom to pursue it because I wasn't in a classroom for several hours a day. And now that doesn't mean that I didn't do my schoolwork or something or that I didn't do as much as I should have. It's just you're able to get it done quicker than if you're in a classroom with 20 other kids because you know it's just like one and one learning almost. So in that aspect, you're able to get it done faster 
And then also it came in super handy when I had a custom order or something that really needed to get done soon. I could just postpone that week of school and either that would go into summer or I would pick up the night following week. So really, it was really flexible and I was able to have that freedom to pursue sewing and learn and to really niche down onto sewing. And that was what I was interested in. My mom always encouraged all of us kids to find our niche and just explore many different options and see where we wanted to focus on and what inspired. So all those different things that you kind of want to figure out what you're good at or not necessarily what you're good at but what your intrigues you and what interests you and such and so for me that was sewing so let's talk a little bit about that sewing journey so as i mentioned before i was 13 when i made my first costume so that's not when i learned to sew i had been sewing for a few years before that and but it was fairly basic things like baby bibs and some other things like that. And the people who taught me those sewing skills were my mom and then my sisters. And they are excellent seamstresses and my oldest sister is actually the one that got us into Civil War era reenacting and she was amazing at creating historically accurate costumes for that reenacting. And really that probably is part of the reason I dived into costuming was the fact that I grew up kind of just surrounded by all that. You know, we would go to reenactments and we would dress in period clothing and we were really intentional on being period accurate. So that's kind of maybe partly the costuming side of what I do and then also the sewing skills. And then also my great grandma, which I talk about a little bit in my Secret Santa video, immigrated from Poland and she and her husband were furriers. And so they were, of course, expert seamstresses. And then it kind of just got passed on. So I guess you could say sewing runs in my blood. But at age 13, I kind of had this crazy idea to make a costume and, well, replicate a costume from a movie. And this movie was The Chronicles of Narnia and the dress was in the Prince Caspian one. And I don't know why I wanted to make this costume because literally it was in for like a couple seconds in the end of the film. It's the coronation scene. And for some reason I wanted to make it. That does tell you a little bit about who I am because I tend to find those projects that are kind of hard to replicate or do. I guess what I'm trying to say is I really love a challenge. Give me something that I have to figure something out or learn a new skill to do. Any of those things that are challenging, I really just, I'm attracted to that. And so I tend to get these projects that halfway through I'm like, why in the world did I choose to make this? I have no idea, but I enjoy it. And that's, that's what counts, right? So I wanted to make this costume and I was in a fabric store and I saw the perfect fabric for it. Well, perfect as in, it was the right color and I thought it worked well and everything. And I bought the fabric and it was $50. And I remember in my 13 year old brain thinking, that's a lot of money. Like I better not mess this up. That's a lot of money to spend on a costume that I'm pretty much not gonna wear ever. Because where do you wear a medieval dress? Because I didn't know of cosplay at that point and I still haven't gone to a cosplay event if that's what it's called but so I bought that $50 of fabric which now is seems extremely cheap for anything project wise there came a time when I was gonna start this dress and start replicating it and my mom and my sisters were gonna help me because I didn't know what I was doing I never made anything that you're supposed to wear before and I was gonna start on it, but then my mom went out of town for several weeks and I asked if I could start it. I was like, I really wanna start it. So she just said, yeah, sure, start it, but make sure, you know, I'm a text away, ask me questions, ask your sisters, you know, get advice and all of that, which of course anyone would do, right? No. About a couple weeks later, I sent her pictures of the nearly finished dress. And I think we kind of all were shocked 
by it. I don't, I don't remember it very much. I mean, really, I don't remember making it hardly at all, but I learned things along the way and this was the finished dress. Making that dress kind of opened up a whole new world of possibilities. That kind of began it all. So I was 13 when I made that. I was about a month away from turning 14. I think the pictures were actually taken when I was 14. So when I was 14 is when I opened my Etsy shop for costumes and such. So yeah, right after I made it, that was kind of my goal in making this was to see if I could start making costumes for people. Little did I know how crazy that would be. It was about a year later when I received my first custom order and that was for another Narnia dress. There was a good amount of time in there that I was able to learn more and pick up new skills and such. But that was kind of at the beginning of a crazy whirlwind of Bellamy's designs. So after I made that first custom order, about six months later is when I started on my Cinderella ball gown replica. And that took off like crazy on Etsy because that's pretty much where I was in Bellamy's design, so it was on Etsy. I didn't have Facebook or Instagram. It was just Etsy. Custom orders started flowing in because of that. And when I say flowing in, it's not like crazy amount. It was maybe four a year. And then I was like, oh, that's not very much. Well, for someone who's trying to finish high school, that was a lot. And in that time from 2015 to I think 2017 is when my, I made my fifth one. I think so. So I made five Cinderella dresses in that two year span. I also had other custom orders mixed in and that was really when a lot of my learning curve, my large learning curve, cause always learning, but that was when my sewing kind of took off and I do a lot of self learning, like a lot of Googling, a lot of Googling, just a lot of Googling and also books. So that is basically, I'm self-taught in the sense of taking it from basic sewing skills on to where I'm at now, which I don't even know where I'm at now. I just, so, so yeah, that's kind of my beginning journey, I guess you could call it. There's a little bit about me and my story, and I think we can move on to the questions so the Q&A section of this video starts now. Let's look here on this Instagram thing. When and how did you learn to sew? I kind of already answered that with my about section of this video. When, when I was 13 is when I started costume sewing and learning to sew from my mom and sisters and then self-taught. The next one, where did you find this inspiration? And you are so talented and gorgeous, thank you. So where did you find this inspiration? That's a hard one, inspiration. So some people you know are really drawn to the mountains or the ocean and I, I love that stuff and it's beautiful, but forms of beauty for me are really an intricately designed costume or historical fashion. I mean, I am a huge fan of pretty much all historical fashion. There's a few eras that aren't my favorite, but pretty much that is my jazz. You know, I just love that. And I guess that's kind of a way to answer that as far as inspiration. It's just, I love fabric and design and everything about it. So I guess you could say that's my inspiration is found there. How did you get into costuming? So again, I think I answered this in the about section. How did I get into costuming was basically making that first costume based on a dress in a movie because again, as I said, the beauty of fashion kind of overwhelms me and that dress was beautiful to me and so I replicated it and that kind of just, that just kept going as far as I saw a movie and I saw the costume in that movie and it was gorgeous and so why not replicate it because I can and what are some hobbies you have other than sewing and YouTube? So hobby, define hobby. Because I don't know if I would call sewing a hobby because it started off as a business and it's still technically a business to me. 
but in the sense of I just kind of sew things I want when I have the spare time, it is a hobby. I don't know if I really have other hobbies. I don't pour much more energy into anything else other than sewing. There's other things I do. What advice do you have for aspiring seamstresses? Okay, this was a good one because I was thinking about this and I would say the best advice I could give to anyone who's wanting to sew or wanting to get into costuming is really just do it. Dive in and do it. So often you kind of want to hold back because you don't know how to do that, maybe that one technique or you know, whatever it may be, it kind of holds you back. But my advice is to just go out and do it. You're gonna fail, you're gonna fail. That's the key. I know that sounds really depressing and all that, but it's true. When you fail, it's the perfect opportunity to learn. And you can always learn. And I think that's the key to pretty much anything, is don't be afraid to fail and learn from that failure because there's a lot of things I've done with costumes that I look back on and I'm like, why did I do that? Why did I do it that way? It looks terrible or whatever, but by doing it and doing it the wrong way, I discovered the right way. And now I'm able to implement that right way into other future costumes. And that's something I just would recommend doing. You're not gonna know everything when you start that first project. There's just no way. I don't know everything when I start a new project. Like just recently, I started an outfit from 1918. This is an era I have never worked with before. I mean, I love the fashion and I've, you know, looked at that before, but I've never made anything before. And there's a lot of things that I didn't know when I started it. I, of course, always research because research is very important. So don't forget that step but also know that there are, there's tidbits of information that you're not gonna find right then. Sometimes it's, you just have to do it and that's when you discover it. Or the next time you found another article that reveals some more light. There you might find later on, oh, why did I do this to this corset? Or why did I do this to this skirt? Because that's not necessarily accurate for that era. But you can't get everything perfect the first go around. I mean. I'm a perfectionist, so I like to think I do, but it's never gonna happen, and that's not discouraging or anything. It's to motivate you to do it, even though you don't know everything, and to learn along the process. Knowing that when you come out of that project, when you finish it, you're gonna be, you're gonna have a boatload of information from just hands-on experience that you now can add to your whole other world of sewing. Just do it. So maybe that's helpful. Also, pretty much every costume that I start out on, there is something, at least something, probably more, there's one thing that just I don't know how to do. And I have to learn that technique in order to do this costume. And really that makes me choose that costume because I know I have to learn that technique in order to do it. And that means every new learn technique, it's not gonna leave you. Anything you learn along the process is gonna be a part of who you are as a seamstress. And now that can be applied to anything. So pick a dress that challenges you. And you may not get it perfect right away, but you're gonna learn along the process. And also, make drafts. Morgan Donner talks about this, and I'll link her video down below, but definitely make drafts. That is where you can do a lot of learning and then your final product will be that much better because you've done all that learning on that draft that isn't gonna be seen by anyone. So that's, I guess, my second piece of advice is to make drafts. Moving on to the next question. Best costume drama ever. So I have about three, four favorite movies and this is Les Mis Rob, the 2012 with Hugh Jackman as I mentioned before, I love Lamez Rob, so the movie, of course. Cinderella, the live action, because obvious reasons. And then my third one is Greatest Showman. 
those are my top three movies. So I would have to say that out of those, costume-wise, Cinderella is the top. There's pretty much no dress in there that I don't like. They're just gorgeous. So, there you go. Do you want to take your ambitions beyond Etsy YouTube? Yes and no. So I do have this long shot dream that will probably never come true because I'm not pursuing it. I would love, love, love to design costumes for a film. Design or make and make, either or. And that's just something I've always wanted to do and at one point I was gonna pursue that but there are certain aspects to pursuing that that I didn't feel like I was ready to do. Some of that is moving to a film hotspot, I guess you could call it, like LA, and that's just not something that I want to do at this time. I'm happy where I am, and I can't imagine moving to LA ever. So, and then the second thing is getting a degree in fashion design, I would feel like is something that is very helpful for that dream ambition, but that's not something I'm gonna do because I'm very self-learner and I am okay with that. So those are two aspects that I'm not pursuing that dream because I don't want to pursue it in that way. And if some time down the road in the future that comes up as far as an option to design costumes or something, I would totally grab hold of it, but I'm not pursuing it. So that's, I guess you could say, a far probably unreachable dream of mine. But we can always dream, right? What is your favorite part of making costumes? That's a hard one because I like all the different aspects, pretty much. I like the finishing touches. I do enjoy that part, but I would also have to say the beginning stage is also very exciting to me. When I think of a project or an idea or something, I kind of just want to jump on right now, abandon all other projects and just go do that other thing that I just dreamt of, which can be kind of annoying sometimes. But that initial planning and gathering supplies and all that, I really enjoyed that part. About halfway through the project is when I usually get discouraged and abandon it or set it aside for a little while. But, so that's probably my least favorite part. And then also, I guess I, as you can tell, I can't really name a specific favorite part. I do like detail a lot. Sometimes I don't like how long that detail takes to accomplish, but I do like adding those details that are just maybe not even noticeable or just really complete the whole outfit. So yeah, probably details, probably. For her historical projects, do you only use natural fiber fabrics, trims, and thread? Yes and no. When I start a historical project, I do want to do my best to be historically accurate. I mean, basically in everything I do want to be accurate to what I'm trying to accomplish. And for a costume, that's making it look like it looks like in the movie. For a historical, that's making it look like how it would be historically. And that would be natural fibers. I do make exceptions here and there, such as my Civil War era ball gown. That is not a natural fiber. It's, I think, about 50, 50 cotton, maybe, and the others rayon. But the reason I did that is because I wanted to make a Civil War era ball gown for myself, but I didn't, I couldn't justify the cost of spending money to make it in silk. And I had this fabric in there that I spent $2 a yard on that looks like silk and feels like silk, but it wasn't silk. And that's an exception I made. I was okay with having that ball gown in a not natural fiber. And it's not something I regret. I would love it was made out of silk, but I couldn't justify the cost. That was the next best option. But on other things, so I do, but I don't. It really depends on the situation. I will tell you, you're not gonna see me choosing a polyester satin for something because that's just, you You can tell that it's not historically accurate. And when I make something, I wanna make it look historically accurate in every aspect. Sometimes that fiber isn't necessarily 100% historically accurate, but it looks it and it, 
and often feels like it. So I guess it's kind of a hard balance because you've got to work with your budget. And often when I make a dress for myself, I have a very low budget. And so I'm going to kind of skip on that. Now that has changed slightly now that I'm mostly making my costumes for myself and then I'll either sell them or I'm hoping to make YouTube a business for me where it can be a source of income. But that's, I guess, a kind of a fishy answer as far as what I do or don't do. But on the most part, my intentions are to be as historically accurate as possible. Do you ship your products for overseas customers? So currently I don't do custom orders, so no as far as in present tense, but in the past, yes, I shipped costumes worldwide. I shipped a few to the UK, one to Austria, a couple other places that I can't think of right now. My dresses went all over the place. Talk about expensive shipping, but yes. How much time do you need to sew a dress? This is very much based on what dress it is. So to give you a little comparison, my non-upgraded Cinderella dress, so my first dress that I made, I spent about 100 hours on. With my upgraded version, I spent 200 hours on it. So that gives you a little idea of the two dresses. They don't look a ton different, but I put more details and attention on, on the upgraded dress. So double the hours. My bell dress, that was 200 hours. My Civil War era ball gown, that's I think about 60, but that's kind of a vague number because I didn't keep track of how long it took to sew on, hand sew on that trim on the bottom. So it really depends on the costume. I would say for a non-intricate dress, so something that doesn't have like really detailed details, I would say about 50 hours for those type of dresses. And then if it's more advanced, has more undergarments or structure or whatever, you're talking several hundred hours. Where did you buy your dummy? I will put the link for that down below in this video. When did you get into sewing? What are some of your inspiration? I answered that first question in my about part of the video. Some inspirations. Basically any costume that is just beautiful. Look through my Pinterest board, which I'll link down below. That's kind of my inspiration. When I need to get inspired, I go on my Pinterest and just scroll on to gorgeous so how do you make a pattern for a bodice that's kind of complicated but a lot of the times I just drape it so I use my dress form and I just drape the fabric on it and play around with it until it's doing what I want it to do and that's basically how I make a lot of my patterns sometimes I use a base pattern so what that means is I just find a pattern that's similar to what I'm trying to create and I get those basic pattern pieces cut out and then I go into my dress form and play around with it to adjust it to what I want it to look like. So those are kind of two ways that I do it. And then here's the one, were you homeschooled? I was and you gave me those homeschooler vibes. Yes, I'm homeschoolered. Yeah, I guess this is when I should put on some nerdy glasses or something. What's your favorite food? This is a random one. I like a lot of food. I like pizza. I like burritos and quesadillas. As you can see, I can't think of anything specific, but I do really love a good pizza. Barbecue pizza is extremely good. What's your favorite costume that you've made and that you haven't made? As far as have you made, it's probably a toss up between the Cinderella ball gown and my Civil War era ball gown. I really like both of them. The Cinderella dress is just kind of the symbol of when I first began this whole crazy journey as far as really, really turning it into a business. And I just really love the design. Sandy Powell did an amazing job on the costumes of Cinderella and this dress is no exception. And so I don't own one right now, which kind of makes it sad. That's why I'm making a sixth one. But yes, that is definitely a favorite costume of mine. 
and then also my civil wear ball gown that was just something it was fun and kind of spur of the moment and i really like how it turned out so yeah kind of probably between those both and then what i haven't made i would say there's a lot of costumes that i absolutely love and would love to make someday but i would have to say that ella's wedding dress in cinderella is my all-time absolute dream dress that i would love to make someday i don't know if we'll make it someday i really hope i do do it but it it would be a huge project so we'll see but yes i would say that whenever i see it it's like yes i really like it so and then here's the last one your photography is amazing who, who does your photography what camera do they use what's their favorite editing software how long do they typically spend editing a photo Okay, so my photographer is my sister, as I mentioned earlier. She's incredible, and yes, I'm a little bit biased. Any finished costumes, you know, finished photo shoot, those are her photos. She does it all, and she's incredible. Any in-progress shots, that's done by me. I use a Canon EOS 5D Mark II. I don't know if that's how you say it, but those are the numbers on the camera because I'm looking at it right now. That's what I use for my photography and video of in progress stuff. Any finished photos, that's by my photographer. And she has the same camera, but a Mark III. So she has a Canon, but the Mark III. She uses Lightroom to edit her photos, I believe. And as far as how long she takes to edit it, I'm not really sure. What she usually does is she gets the edit the edit down for that batch of photos and then once she gets that done it's kind of the same for each of the photos in that photo shoot so i'm not really sure how long it takes her i'm guessing an hour or so to get that first edit ready to give to the rest of the pictures if that's how you want to describe it so yeah i hope that answers your question that's what i use also to edit my photos is lightroom and i just play around with all the settings i'm not specific at it at all. I'm pretty sure that answers all the questions that I got on Instagram. If you have any questions that maybe some of my answers arised more questions or something, be sure to comment those down below. Also, I have different links in the description. Be sure to check that out. And then before we've closed this video out, I did just open my Patreon account. So if you'd like to support me via there, the link for that is down below. And if you decide to support, thank you, thank you, thank you. It would be amazing to have you along for this journey. What that Patreon money will give me is the opportunity to make more videos for you, to make more projects so I can make more videos for you and all that. So thank you if you choose to do that. The link for that is down below. I think that closes out this about and Q&A video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see weekly videos from this YouTube channel. And then as always, go out, learn, create, and inspire.